Hi everyone, my name is Robert. And I'm Jake. And summer's here! Which means Robert and I are up American Fort Canyon. Making s'mores. Um, Robert, you're not making s'mores, you're burning s'mores. Your marshmallow's on fire. Oh, look at that. Well, speaking of fire, it's got a pretty nasty reputation. Especially wildfire. And summer's the time of year when we start to worry about fire. But why? Well, it did just destroy my marshmallow, but what do you think? Why should we worry about wildfires? Well, fires do a lot of damage. They can destroy homes, burn crops. Burn marshmallows. That was your fault. And affect the ecosystem. Over the last two years in Utah, there have been nearly 1,800 fires that burned over 74,000 acres. That's a lot of forests and grassland going up in smoke. Wildfires have been occurring naturally for thousands of years, but they weren't really a problem until we started moving west. Fire is scary. The obvious response seemed to be, put them out. So the Forest Service started putting out all the wildfires, and they did pretty good. The number of wildfires dropped dramatically. But over time, the fire that we couldn't stop started getting worse. They burned bigger, hotter, and longer. In fact, wildfires actually started burning more land than before we started fighting them at all. Realizing we had a big problem on our hands, the Forest Service decided to study what was going on. They learned that fire was actually doing some unexpected good things. Hold up. How can being burnt be a good thing? How can fire actually benefit an ecosystem? Seem to remember maybe the ash helps with the nutrients, maybe? To burn out everything we don't need anymore to rebuild, to start uh, growing new stuff that we will need. Uh, I think it could be sort of like a reset button if there's uh, maybe flaws or anything that the wildfire can maybe kill off the flaws and that nature can restart and regrow. A wildfire for a forest can be a new start or a new beginning. It's weird to think that some ecosystems rely on fire, but what is an ecosystem? Let's look a little bit closer. Ecosystems are made up of everything around us. Doesn't matter if it's soil, trees, cars, concrete, it's technically part of an ecosystem. And all these aspects in an ecosystem can be classified as either living or non-living. Living things, which are also called biotic factors, include things like plants, grass, animals, trees, even things that used to be alive. Like this stick here. On the other hand, non-living things such as rocks, dirt, the sun, and the air are all considered abiotic factors. These things are not alive, but they are still an important piece of the system. And all of these factors, living and non-living, biotic and abiotic, interact in ways that we might not realize. For instance, let's check out the grass. Which is a biotic factor. That has roots that reach down into the soil for water and nutrients. Which are abiotic. And at the same time, the leaves. Biotic. Are taking in energy from sunlight. Abiotic. For photosynthesis and all the other functions that a plant needs to survive. So an ecosystem is really a community of living and non-living things. But where does that put fire? Well, fire is an abiotic factor that impacts an entire ecosystem. To really see how this works, let's go out to our fire expert in the field. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, we're up here above the University of Utah in the Gamble Oak community where there was a recent wildfire. Uh, and this community is really well adapted to fire. There was a fire here uh, about five years ago, and this fire, um, burned off a lot of the canopy and it created openings uh, for some of the herbs and uh, the grasses and forbs to come in. This really creates a diversity of habitat. This, this is um, great for a whole host of species to move into the area after fire. It also puts soil nutrients in the ground. Uh, this allows um, for more regeneration of the vegetation. So these, these fires um, are actually part of the system that uh, is required for a successful, healthy Gamble Oak uh, community. Hey, you gotta tell them about the pine cones. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, these, these pine cones are really interesting. Uh, they're fire adapted, uh, it's lodgepole pine, and without fire, it would uh, nearly be impossible for some of these lodgepole pine forests to regenerate. The, the heat from the fire um, releases the cones through uh, heating the resin that then opens the, the cone scales. Um, these fires also um, uh, destroy some of the pathogens and insects that we're seeing uh, as epidemics across our forests today. So, so fire is a, is a process of renewal in these forests. Um, and this is just you know, one small adaptation of, of opening seeds uh, that wildfires do that's a positive benefit for these forests. There you go. Wildfires are essential. Instead of trying to stop wildfires completely, we now use a method called prescribed burns. Yeah, by starting small, controlled fires in certain areas, we restore the natural cycle in a relatively safe way. This clears debris, opens up the forest to sunlight, recycles nutrients back into the soil. Abiotic. 
kickstart seed growth. Biotic. Hey, we already played that game. Sorry. And the prescribed burns even help control local diseases that uh, yeah. may harm the ecosystem. And you may have noticed that those are the same benefits that occurred with natural wildfires in the past. Exactly. We're helping nature do what it used to do in a way that is still safe for us. Prescribed burns are awesome, but leave those to the pros. Many wildfires are caused by humans being careless, and with shorter winters and drier summers, the risk of fire increases. Things like lighting off fireworks, burning weeds, sparks from target shooting, even parking your car on dry brush can be the cause behind a major fire. We're not saying that all these activities are bad, just that we need to be careful about how we use them. Only use fireworks in approved areas, only shoot in places clear to brush, and only light fires in designated spots, like this campfire pit. And don't forget to put the fire out completely before leaving. I think you missed. Whoops. But hey, water is an abiotic factor. Well, thanks for joining us today as we explored, discovered, and learned more about the wonders of our living planet. And please click here to subscribe to see a new video each month. We'll see you next time. <laughs>